Welcome to this Excel video. Instead of looking at training load or some S&C stuff, the next few vids we're going to look at performance analysis and applications of Excel. In today's video we're going to look at how you might use Excel to code up a sports game. Now there's some amazing custom software out there that you can go and buy but if you haven't got access to that or you're not sure what you want to do yet then Excel can do a pretty good job and it can help you understand the processes that are happening. And before we get into the video I just want to draw your attention to something. If you go to the videoanalyst.com you will see that there is an Excel for Analyst training course. This course consists of 10 hours of videos that have been specially prepared for performance analysts. They cover a variety of topics from getting to know Excel and doing some basic things right the way through to database creation and visualization. So if you're trying to expand your career and you need some Excel skills, then you might want to check it out. Back to our spreadsheet, what you can see is that there's a bunch of buttons on there. Now these are nothing more than simple shapes. And so if I click on a box, we get that shape. Instead of typing text onto it, I can type the equal sign instead and click on a cell reference such as M1. Nothing happens yet, but as I type something into M1, we can see that it links to that button. I can then blow the font up and it's quite useful. We'll be attaching a piece of code to these buttons shortly, but this is the starting point. And the reason why you might want to use references to cells rather than typing text is it allows you to put different names on the button next week without having to go and redo everything. So if I wanted to change the name, I could very, very easily. Just going to get rid of that, go to the config panel and show you where I've got those names. As you can see here, we've got John Test, if I change that to Jimmy Test, we'll go and see that Jimmy Test is now our final athlete in the list. It's the same for all of these buttons. They're simply linked to that config sheet. Now if I click the Start button, what it's going to put down is today's date and time. We can see that it is 4.26 in the afternoon on the 28th of the 10th, 2016. And why that's important is because now everything is going to reference against that time. And so what do I mean by that? When I click a name, a bit of code is adding three cells of data. It's saying second half because I've chosen second half here. It's going to put the time, that is 18 seconds since the start of the game. And Dwayne Baker's done something. What has he done? He's done a purposeful pass that we've decided is positive. Let's quickly do a couple more. So I just put four rows of data in there, relatively easy. As I do so, I have populated this little grid. We've now got half time, name, event and outcome populated for us. And so as the game goes on, that list is going to grow and grow and grow. We may have five or six hundred rows by the end of a match, depending on how much we want to code. What you can then obviously do is run some stats and say how many times did Dwayne Baker engage with the match, how many of them were passes, how many of those passes were positive, and so on and so on. So we're going to have a look at some of the ways you might analyze the data in subsequent videos, but in this one I simply want to show you how I put this thing together. And so this is just text, so you can just type that in. I've got a drop-down box here that's got a few options in it. And that's on the config panel, so you could muck around. Depending on your sport, you might want to have different options in there. The counter is just a formula telling us that how many there, there are in the grid. So, And so if I add another one, we can see there's now five in there. So nothing too complicated there. What is a little bit complicated is the VBA code. So it may be that you simply want a copy of this file, which you're welcome to, and edit the code, paste it into your file and see how you can make it work. On the developer tab I'm going to click on Visual Basic and I'm going to bring up my code window. You can see it pops up just above my Excel sheet. 
I have got a module in there called button codes. A module is basically just a sheet of paper that I can write some code on. And so there are four macros. One for the start button. What does that do? Well that just pastes the time now. So that's what this piece of code says now. Into that cell. Select cell B2 and paste the time now into it. So that's pretty easy. Next one's the most complicated. That does three things. It copies half, currently says second half. Copies that into column A. It puts the time in there. And it figures that out by finding the time now. And subtracting the time in cell B2. And that gives us a little reference. It then looks on the button and takes the name. So that's what this is. BTN cap is the caption that's on that button. And that's it. If I minimize that, click on Wayne, what it's done is exactly what I said. Picks the half, calculates the time, puts whatever text is on the button that I clicked, and it's done. If I change this to first half, we'll see that or extra time one for argument's sake. It's just taking whatever I click on, pasting it in there. Let's go back to the code. The event has got a much simpler job. It simply looks at column three. It finds the last event in column three. And then it pastes next to it what just happened. We've just put a purposeful pass in, but it might be something else. The outcome does the same thing, except this time it looks in column four for the last event that we've coded. It takes the caption of the button we've just clicked, positive, neutral, or negative, and pastes it in there. And that's all the code. There's four macros. And if I right click on one of these buttons, we can see a sign macro and we can see the code that it is used. A piece of code called outcome. If we click on one of these names, choose assign macro, we can see it's called timestamp name. And this one's simply called start. So that code's been written. These buttons now just look it up, run the code, and it's a done deal. So let's change that to first half, put a few more codes in there. And so you can see it's relatively easy to add things to your grid. You wouldn't want to have too many events on there because it's hard to keep up and it can also be hard to do effective uh, evaluations of outcome on the fly. You might not be sure if it's a positive or negative outcome so you might leave that out altogether and instead of outcome you might have an area of the field first attacking half, defensive half or you might divide it up further even. It's up to you but what I'm trying to illustrate is that with just a few buttons, a couple of lines of code, you can make your own set of codes and then you can go ahead and do some analysis. Stay tuned, I'm going to do two or three more videos using this data and showing how you can be looking at things while you're coding and therefore be able to potentially influence a match as it's happening rather than later on.